Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research suggested for you. My name's Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me in our illustrious podcast studios this week is Dr. Tyler Holt. Dr. Holt has served quite a few roles in the pig industry uh, and is currently the Senior Program Coordinator for the United States Swine Health Improvement Plan, or as we often hear it referred to, the SHIP program. Um, Dr. Holk, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. And if you would, let's start a little bit with an introduction and some background on yourself. Well, thanks, Clayton. Really appreciate the opportunity to share about U.S. SHIP today. Uh, background, well, you said it. I've been around for quite a while in the U.S. Uh, swine industry and doing a little bit international uh, Iowa boy, South Dakota State undergrad, and then uh, Iowa State for DVM and and uh, masters and MBA. And most of my career has been spent in the biopharma industry. But about eight years ago, started uh, my own consulting, uh, working with several different companies and interacting with you on some of those uh, efforts. And then uh, a little over two years ago, Dr. Roger Main from Iowa State approached me and asked if if I would be willing to help kick off this U.S. Swine Health Improvement Plan, uh, a uh, pilot that we'll get into that we're quickly moving towards a USDA uh, codified program. Excellent. Well, the U.S. Swine Health Improvement Program, it sounds like a very, very large program. Talk to us a little bit, Tyler, about what is the mission, what's the vision, what, what do we hope the program can achieve for pig producers? Yeah, well, Clayton, I think it's best to probably start with, well, where was the idea? Where, what was the impetus behind even trying to accomplish this? And uh, really about four years ago, Dr. Roger Main, along with several other individuals, said, is there something that we can do that would transformationally change the health of our U.S. swine industry? And looking to other industries, they spent a year studying the poultry industry and specifically the National Poultry Improvement Plan. And they did a case study, which was funded by SHIC, the Swine Health Information Center, that basically then concluded that what the poultry industry has for a National Poultry Improvement Plan could very much, that basis, that foundation could, that model could very much serve our U.S. swine industry very well. Um, and so that was com accomplished back in 2018, 2019. And by 2020 is when the USDA said, you know what, let's fund an initial pilot to see what a program on the swine side might look like, or from the poultry side might look like in the swine world. Very good. You know, I think there's opportunities for us to learn from the poultry industry. They've had to deal with high path AI outbreaks here, uh, and I should say high path avian influenza outbreaks here uh, repeatedly. Unfortunately, over the last, you know, six, seven years, they've had a couple of major outbreaks, I guess, going back to 2015. Um, and it sure seems like um, there have been some major pain points in dealing with those. I think everybody in the poultry industry would tell us that that's not been fun. Uh, depopulation, you know, carcass disposal, and then the trade impacts. Um, you know, we may not be able to change the fact that some of that depopulation and disposable, we've got to go through that. But the trade impacts sure seem like they have been less and less of an event. You know, each year they've had to deal with it. Do I do I read that incorrectly, Tyler, or does it seem like they're kind of setting up a pathway or a model that we should be trying to follow? No, you're spot on, Clayton. And and as you asked about, well. What actually would be the vision for what U.S. SHIP could accomplish for the swine industry? We're seeing that real time right now on the poultry side. So again, we're modeling SHIP after the NPIP from the poultry industry. By the way, that's been around since 1935. It started with some domestic and endemic diseases like Salmonella pylorum. But recently, they established an H5H7 avian influenza program within NPIP. And that literally has been developed over the last few years. And to your point, high path AI or high path avian influenza is a trade impacting disease for our poultry industry, similar to what ASF would be for our swine industry. And in 2015, before 
the high path AI program in NPIP was fully developed, there were 60 countries that stopped importing poultry from the U.S. due to that high path outbreak in 2015. Wow. The poultry industry continued to work on that program, built in some more biosecurity components. And in 2022, last year, and as we know, continues into 2023, which is an even larger outbreak in the U.S. with high path AI, there's only two countries that have banned poultry from the U.S. They've trusted the NPIP program, which serves to identify or provide evidence of the freedom of disease. And so those countries have gone down to either the state or even the county level, rather than saying, we won't take poultry from the entire U.S. So if you think about that comparison of high path AI and poultry to what would potentially happen with ASF and swine, that would be the crux of, well, why would we want to develop a U.S. swine health improvement plan and why now? So it's, um, I think it's very relevant and that comparison is probably the best we have for what this could accomplish with regard to a foreign animal disease that has trade impact. Yeah. And I'm sure that getting from 60 countries that are impacted to two is not an easy journey. Uh, we got a lot of lessons learned that we can harvest there. So talk to us a little bit about the mechanics of the program, Tyler. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of things. Just start with definitions, defining kind of shared terminology. How do we get from that point all the way to the point where we got a program that's operating and not only we as producers have trust in it, but the globe when consumers have trust in it? Sure. So with the NPIP, I mean, once they've got that in place, that particular program, then it's a USDA program, even though I think it's really important for the audience to understand NPIP and now the U.S. SHIP is a collaboration of industry, meaning producers and packers, state animal health officials, and federal or USDA. Codified as a USDA program and NPIP, which is where we're headed with U.S. SHIP, that allows our USDA trade folks to entertain that in negotiations with the different countries that we export, in that case, poultry, or in our case, pork, to. So by establishing that program, which involves traceability, biosecurity, and surveillance, components that, that the, all of the participants agree to meet or exceed those standards or requirements, by doing that, you have a certification program that not only our U.S., each of our states can acknowledge, but also our trading partners. So we've got to put together a, a certification program. We've got to get the producers that are on that program to meet the minimum standards of it. And then that program builds trust in our industry that even if there is a disease present, that we can identify where the disease is, know where it is, and guarantee safety of the food supply chain, for lack of a better term. L-Biotics, the pioneer postbiotic for digestive health in pigs. Brought to you by Adair Biome. With over a century of experience in postbiotics for digestive health, L-Biotics contains heat-treated lactobacillus cell bodies and their metabolites. Stable by nature, L-Biotics can be easily stored and incorporated in compound feed. Well, thank you very much, Tyler. Thanks for, for all the work that you, Roger, the entire team. I know Giovanni's been greatly involved. Uh, you have a wonderful team that you're working with on this program. And I certainly can't think of anything uh, that's more important to port producer sustainability in the United States uh, to, to work on at this point. Sustainability is a buzzword that gets thrown around and it means whatever you want it to mean. Uh, but, you know, pork producers have to be financially sustainable to be sustainable in any other way. Um, and we can't afford uh, foreign animal disease to decimate our industry and really appreciate all the effort. Um, and thanks to, for coming on the, the podcast to our audience. Thank you for listening to the Swine Health Black Belt podcast. If you haven't checked out our website, please go to swinehealthblackbelt.com to see this episode, but also all of our previous episodes. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so that you can stay up to date on all the great information we're bringing to you every week. Dr. Olk, it's been a pleasure to chat with you as always. Thank you very much for, for doing this and coming on the show. Thank you, Clayton, and I appreciate just the opportunity to share about what we're doing with the U.S. ship. Yep. 
Very good. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health-related research trial and would like to come on the show to talk about it with me and share it with our audience, feel free to send an email to healthblackbelt at swineit.com, and we would love to take a look at your research.